Welcome to Celebration Church Pretoria Online. We are excited to have the opportunity to connect with you through this online platform. Celebration Church Pretoria is part of the family of churches for Celebration Churches International, founded by Senior Pastors Tom and Bonnie Duchel. The lead pastors for our Pretoria branch are Pastors Dixon, Andy Tai, Katizira. There are various ways that you can stay connected with the church. Connect with us on our various online platforms. Join the church WhatsApp group. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us on Zoom for different activities. Let us connect in corporate prayer and fasting every Wednesday, which culminates our domain prayer meetings from 6 to 7 p.m. on Zoom. We encourage you to continue giving your tithes and offerings through electronic funds transfers. We continue to stand in faith, believing that we will be moving to our own building soon. So let us continue giving to our building project fund. For more information and details regarding what has been mentioned, please do not hesitate to send us a message in our inbox. As we continue with our service, please comment and let us know where you are watching from. We invite you now as we praise and worship the Lord together.
we would now like to invite you to join us for the word of the day. Welcome to Celebration Church Pretoria Online. I wish to say happy, happy, happy new year. Uh, I believe you had a restful break. Some of you traveled, but welcome back. And we thank God for a new year. We thank God that 2021 will be a better year, will be a year that uh, will be much, much better than 2020. So today, the title of my message this morning is I want to talk about realignments for 2021. You know, Albert Einstein said this. He said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So for you and I, if we're expecting different results in 2021, there are some things we need to change. There are some things we need to improve. There are also some things actually we need to, to let go of as we are progressing. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 90, verse 12, it says, help us to remember, help us to remember that our days are numbered. Help us to to, to interpret our lives correctly. Oh, I love the word of God. And set wisdom deeply in our hearts that we may accept your correction. May God help us this year to number our days. May God help us to interpret our lives correctly and set wisdom in our hearts so that we are able to, to, to accept correction. So as we start 2021, it would be good for us to take stock of our lives for the past year i would like us to, to to take a moment to take an inventory of our lives our past our present and our future so we cannot change past events nor predict the future but we can look over our past and plan for the future and to do so effectively there are three things we need to do so the first thing we need to take stock of our past. We need to take stock of 2020. So as we take stock, the first thing we need to do as we take stock of the past is where have we been in our stewardship? Where have we been in our stewardship? Have you been a good steward? So there are three areas that we really need to, 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 to take a look at. Have you been a good steward in 2020? The first thing is time. Have you been a good steward of time? You know, they say good time management is a process of planning and exercising conscious control of time spent on specific activities, especially to, effect, to increase effectiveness, efficiency, and productivity. Have you been productive in 2020? So you, we need to look at that. M.M. Skenerson said that the key to time management is to see the value of every moment every moment time spent is time gone so that's why the bible says in the book of psalms 31 verse 15a it says my life every moment my destiny it's in your hands every moment of your life are you using your time effectively are you using your time effectively robin sharma says this time management is life management if you can't manage your time in 2021 you will not be able to manage your life. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 says, So be careful how you live, not to be like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom, for we are living in evil times. The times we are living are evil. Verse 16 says, Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for its purposes. Don't live foolishly, for those who have, um, for, for then you have discernment to fully understand the will of God for your life. So we need to, to be good stewards of time. Have you been a good steward in 2020? So in 2021, there are some things you need to change if you have been not a good steward of time. The second thing when you talk about stewardship is your talents and your abilities. The Bible tells us that we are born with distinct talents, gifts, that set us apart from each other. The Bible says in the book of um, um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse um, 10, it says, Each one is a good manager 
of God's different gifts must use for the good of others, the special gift is given to us. You must discover the talents that God has given you so that you may use them to glorify him as you align with the perfect will for his life. I like what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says. It says, you have become his poetry, a recreated um, people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us for we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would, we would do to fulfill it. So there are those gifts that God has given you. There are those abilities. Have you been a good steward in 2020? If not, in 2021, you need to do something about it. You need to make sure that those gifts are deployed correctly, that those gifts are used for the glory of God. In the area of stewardship, the third thing is our treasure. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 10, it says, the one who manages the little, he has been given, um, he has been given with faithfulness and integrity, will be promoted and trusted with even greater responsibilities. But those who cheat with little, um, um, but those who cheat with little, they are given who will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. Maybe the reason why you are not receiving more is because you are not trustworthy. You are not managing the things that God has entrusted you with. If you continue to verse 11, it says, If you have not handled um, riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the eternal treasuries of this world, or of the spiritual world? And if you have not been, um, if you have not proven faithful with that which belongs to another, why should you be given an own, your own, your, your own? So, have you been a good employee, even where you have been working? Have you been a good uh, person, a good steward in terms of how you manage your finances? You may not, the reason may be why you are not blessed, why you don't have much given to you because you have not been faithful. You have not been faithful with your tithe. You have not been faithful with your offerings. You have not been faithful with how you have been given back to God who is the source of everything. You know, the Bible says in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, Glorify God with your wealth, honoring Him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. Then every dimension of life will overflow with blessing from an uncontainable source of inner joy you need to look that have you been a good steward in terms of treasury have you been given to god to advance the work of god if not this is a good time for you to reconsider your ways this is a good time for you to look how you can change that as we start a new year so the second so we talked about how have you been doing with your stewardship the second area is how have you been doing in our discipleship, how have we been doing in our discipleship? So in terms of being a good disciple, uh, there are three areas. The first one, have you been a good and faithful disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or maybe you are one of those camouflage Christians. Do people in your neighborhood, does your neighbor know that you are a child of the Most High God? Do people in your class, do they know that you are a child of the Most High God? Do your friends even know that you are born again, you are a disciple of Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible says in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9a, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole world, earth, to show himself strong on behalf of those who are loyal or those who are faithful to him. So God is looking for a people whose heart is loyal to him. God is looking for a people who are faithful to him to show himself strong on their behalf. That's why Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20a says, A faithful person, will be richly blessed. So have you been f a faithful disciple in, 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 in um, following um, your maker? The second area, have you been an X1 verse 8 Christian? What is X1 verse 8? Uh, I, I'm glad you asked. Uh, let me read X1 verse 8 for you. It says, but when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you will be filled with power and you will witness for me in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the ends of the earth. So this is when Jesus was telling his disciples before he ascended about the Great Commission. 
that you need to tell people, those close to you, those in your neighborhood, and those in the nation. Have you been intentional and consistent about sharing the love of God to those people who are around you? Have you been participating in the ministry of reconciliation? Remember, we're entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Now all things are of God, who has uh, reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Have you been in Acts 1 verse 8, Christian? Have you been sharing the gospel? If not, as we start 2021, make a decision. Be intentional that this year you will be sharing the good news in the different spheres that God has placed you in. The third area in terms of being a disciple or discipleship, have you been growing or you are backslidden? If you had to look when you started 2020, but to the time you, 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 you ended, I know we had a lockdown, which means we had a lot of time either to read and study the word or a lot of time to be consuming a lot of junk, series and Netflix, show marks. I don't know what have you been consuming. But the Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, but continue to grow and increase in God's grace and intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, may, he, oh, may he receive all the glory, both now until the day of eternity begins. So have you been growing? If you have not been growing, this is a good time to see what are you going to do to, 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 to grow? You know, the Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, it says, for this reason, make every effort. I declare to someone this morning, Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. And if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective, unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you where you are supposed to be spiritually? What new habits and routines do you need to do this year? Do you need to include in your life to foster spiritual growth? This is a good time to make those resolutions that you need to grow. You need to, to begin to, to, you know, they say junk in, junk out. Even the things you are putting into your spirit, the things you are watching, the music you are, you are, you are consuming. Make a decision, they say, that you feed your soul, that you get to a place where you grow. The... The broad area we need to look uh, as we look in our past, where have, where have you been in our relationships? Where have we been in our relationships? You know, your relationship with God is vital to all other relationships you have with your other people. If your relationship with God is not right, you see that the relationship with your wife will not be right. Relationship even with your schoolmates, relationship with your children, it won't be right. So having, um, have your have you been uh, building quality relationships this year? Hey, what kind of relationships have you been building in the past year? Were they transactional relationships or they were those relationships that were intentional? Who has been your Paul? Who has been your Barnabas? Who has been your Timothy? And who has been mentoring you in different spheres of your life? Who have you been accountable to? And who have you been also mentoring? We need those quality relationships. You need those checks and balances. You know, as a person, there's someone who should be speaking to your life. There's some peers who should be encouraging you to go on. And there's also someone you, you are supposed to be also leading. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, it says it is a grinding wheel to sharpen a blade. It takes a grinding wheel to sharpen a blade. So one person sharpens the character of another. Who has been sharpening you? Who has been your lead lifter in 2020? But as we get to a place where you find people who challenge you, people who tell you when you are wrong, you need quality relationships. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So remember, we said, first of all, for us to move forward effectively, they say we need to look, take stock of our past. So the second thing we need to do is we need to take stock of where we are right now here in the month of january we have crossed over by the grace of god where are we we need to assess our current status with regards to 
our lives. What have we learned from the mistakes you did last year? Last year, for me, there are so many mistakes I did. But I, I, you know what? You, you need to carefully identify, itemize lessons and insights gained from the past year and so that they become part and parcel of your life principles going forward. You must identify even the new areas that still need attention. So one of the ways is you can use the wheel of life where you can assess that you know where are you with your money and finances. Are you where, where you are supposed to be? Where are you with your work and career? Where are you in with regards to, to health and fitness? You know, some of you, because of the holiday lockdown, some of you have got a zero pack now. You know, maybe this is a good time to say, you know what, I need a six pack. You need to, to start running. You need to start having new habits, new um, diets even to eat. The way you eat, fun and recreation. How have you been doing like that? Your environment, have you been affecting or making an impact in the people around you, your community? Family and friends, what kind of friends, what kind of, have you been connecting with the family? Your love and, uh, you know, partners, if you're a married man, you've got a bay. How have you been doing in that area? Spiritually, I mean, if you've been growing spiritually, where are you? You know, and even growth and learning, have you been learning? Some of you, have you, what, you know, to me, I always say that every day you need to learn something new. Have you been learning or you are just the same person? So we need to assess where we are so that we are we are able to know some of the areas that we need to work on in 2021 so we've talked about we need to take stock of where are your past you need to take stock of your current and we also need to take stock of where we are going this is january this is the year the lord has made and we're excited we've got all these 12 months ahead of us and guess what we need to know where is it that we are going if you don't have a plan, people may take you wherever they want to take you. We will need vision. It will enable you to clearly determine where you are supposed to go in 2021. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18a, it says, where there is no vision, people perish. So if you don't have a vision, if you don't know what it is you want to do in 2021, you perish. You will not go anywhere. So what is this vision we are talking about? The first thing, vision is access to God's original intention for a person's creation. If you say, God, in 2021, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to do in the next two years? What is it that you want me to do in the next five years? As you align to that, to God's original intent, you become fruitful, you become effective. That's what the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. We are assured and know that God being um partner in their labor all things work together and fitting into into a plan for for good to those who love god and accord to um according to his design and purpose we need to align to god's design we need to allow to to god's purpose as we do that all things will work together for you in 2021 god did not create you before he decided what to do with you before you were conceived in your mother's womb, God knew the purpose that you are supposed to, 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 to serve here on earth. As you align to that, it will clarify what it is that you need to do in this year for you to, to fulfill what God needs uh, you to do. The second thing, vision is a mental picture of a desirable future. Do you know what kind of future you want in 2021? What kind of a 2021 are you trusting God for? Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. Remember when Abraham had departed with Lord. Let's catch up with them on verse 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lord had separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward, for all the land which you see, not which you pray for, which you see, I will give to you and your descendants. Whatever can cross your mind, whatever can cross your imagination, it will cross your path. What do you see? What do you see? What kind of a 2021 do you see? What kind of a 2021 are you trusting God for? As you see that vision is a, is a, is a mental picture of what, what is to expect. The third thing, vision is an internal imagination of life's destination. Oh, I love the word of God. You know, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says now to him who is able to do immeasurably 
more than all, number one, we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work with us. What are you asking? What are you imagining? Sometimes some people, they just ask, but they are not imagining. I declare and decree that in 2021, may you imagine, may you see things. May the Lord open your spiritual eyes. May the Lord cause you to see beyond your, 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 your generation. May God cause you to see beyond 2021. What do you see about yourself the next five years? The next 10 years, where do you see yourself? The next 20 years, where do you see yourself? What is your inner consciousness of life destination? May God help us as our vision is clear. Our internal imagination to life destination becomes clear as well. So why is vision necessary for you and me in 2021? The first thing, vision brings focus to life. Some of you remember we're talking about time. The reason why people don't pray, the reason why people are not focused is because they have no vision. Vision helps us to avoid distractions. It gives us bearing to life. That's why the Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. 2020 is gone. We're in the lockdown. The lockdown is gone. Now we need to focus on the future. We need to focus as we pursue, as we overtake and recover all in this season of 2021. You know, I like what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 26 to 27 says. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything that I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert in top condition. I'm not going to be caught napping, telling everyone else about it and then missing it myself. I'm not going to be caught napping in 2021. No sloppy living for me. No sloppy living for you. I declare and decree that you know what? You, are, you will press hard for the finish line. You will press hard for the finish line because your vision is going to give you focus in the name of Jesus. The second thing is vision brings action to your life. It brings action. It makes life active, dynamic, and interesting. It delivers you from the spell of idleness. It delivers you from indolence and laxity in your life. It delivers you from all those things. That's what the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. It says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that ye may run who reads it. When there is a vision, you begin to run. When there's a vision, you can't sleep. When there's a vision, no one will tell you to wake up and pray. When there's a vision, no one will cause you would tell you that you know what you need to be focused because vision brings action to life may your vision be clarified so that may, there may be action to your life thank you lord jesus the third thing why vision is so important vision averts the tragedy of wasted time it averts that time not managed is wasted time is either directed or wasted the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. May you understand what God wants you to do with your time in 2021. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The fourth thing why vision is so important in 2021, vision brings discipline to your life. It brings discipline. You know, discipline is what you do, what to do to fulfill your vision. You know, I like what um, James Brown says, James Brown Jr. He says, talent without discipline. Is like an octopus on a roller coaster or on roller skates. Hey, I like that. There's plenty of movement, but you never know if it is going forward, 
sideways or even um, uh, backwards. You know what? There are some people, business does not mean being productive. I declare that this is not your portion. As God brings discipline to your life, you will know where you are supposed to be going. This is what Zig Ziglar said. He says, it was character that got us out of bed. Commitment that moves us into action. And discipline that enabled us to follow through. May you have discipline to follow through the things that God has entrusted you to do in 2021. This is what Jim Rohn said. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. There are so many things, so many resolutions that you have said, I want to do this in 2021. But without discipline, there won't be the, the bridge between those goals and the accomplishment of those goals. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The fifth thing, which is the last thing, vision defines your associations. Vision defines your associations. What you want to achieve in your life will determine who is an allocation of space in your life. Oh, I like that. Some of you, there every year I, I take my phone, I sit down, and I begin to delete people. So there are some people say, this one does not help me. I clean, clean the phone. Some of you need, to, if you see me not talking to you, it means, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's just a joke. The Bible says in the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 3, it says, do two people walk hand in hand if they are not going to the same place? Oh, I love the word of God. There are some people, they are not going where you are going. God has called you to a higher place. Those people, they will pull you down. So unless two people are going to the same place, so you need to begin to, they say, beds of the same feathers, flock together. If you are going to the same destination, you see some friends, they will begin to fall. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says, Stop fooling yourselves. Evil companions will corrupt good morals and character. And even um, Proverbs 27, verse 17, I think we read it um, earlier on, is iron sharpens iron. So a person, one person sharpens another person. Some of their associations, they don't add value. They are merely parasites. You need to reconsider and review some of your, 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 your associations. And do they support your vision? Are they those people who challenge you to grow? Are they those people who get you out of your comfort zone? Or there are people who say, come on, we've got a crab mentality. If they see you going up, they'll take you down. Let me just recap as we end uh, our first um, service today. We're talking about realignment for 2021. And we started talking about what uh, Albert Einstein said. He said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if you do what you're doing in 2020 and you expect 2021 to be different, forget it. You are insane. There are things you need to change. There are things you need to add in your life. There are things you need to include in your life. If you're expecting different results, there are some things we need to improve. And we said to effectively do that in terms of changing and doing that, you know, we need to take stock of our past. Where we spoke about um, where have you been in our stewardship with regards to our time, with regards to our talent, and with regards to, to our treasure. So this is the time for you to, to decide that what am I going to do with my time? If you need to decide that what am I going to do to advance the kingdom? How much am I going to give to the work of God? It's just the way we plan. We need to plan all those things. And we said, what have we been, um, how have we been doing in our discipleship? Where we said, have you been a good and faithful uh, disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or you have been busy? You know, sometimes we people, we try and uh, fit God in our schedule. But we need God, we need to fit ourselves in God's schedule. What does God want you to do in 2021? And have you been an ex 1 verse 8 Christian? Have you been sharing the gospel? Have you been sharing the gospel? You know, this is a year that we are trusting God that we are going to share the gospel like never before. Have you been growing in grace or you have been backsliding? And the second thing as we are taking stock, where have you been with your relationships? You need to review your relationships. Some of your relationships, you need to pursue some new people that can be lead lifters for you. And we said we also need to take stock of 
where we are, where we need to identify areas that need change, areas that need um, 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 to be assessed. So we said, you know, we can use the wheel of life to look at different aspects of your life. Then we spoke about, we need to talk, talk of where we are going, where we are going. And we said vision will enable you to know where you are going. And he said, what is vision? Vision is access to God's original intention for a purpose creation. If you want to know what God wants you to do, ask your creator. Ask your creator. Say, God, what do you want me to do? Vision is a mental picture of a desired future. May God help us that may we be able to see all the things that God wants us to do in, in 2021. Vision is an internal imagination of life destination. May God cause you to see beyond your children's children. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I ended up to say, why is vision so critical? Vision brings focus in our life. Vision brings action. Vision averts the tragedy of wasted time. Vision brings discipline to your life. And vision defines our associations. So as we start this year, I just want you to, to take a moment to say, where have you been? This is not, we said insanity is trusting God for a great year, but is, you are doing life as you used to do it. There are new habits that you need to form. There are new things, there are things that must fall in your life. Even as we are trusting God for a great year, we need vision. Vision will bring action to your life. Vision will cause you to be able to do more than all those things you, 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 you may think that you may be able to do. May the Lord begin to help you. May God help us as we start a, a new year. May God help us. May God clarify us all the things, all I declare and decree that even some of those relationships that you don't need in your life, I declare that may the wind of the Holy Spirit begin to blow and sift people, relationships that you don't need in your life so that you remain focused to what God wants you to do. I'm excited about this year. May the Lord increase our capacity. May God increase your intellectual capacity for you to be able to, 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 to see things. You know, when God blessed Solomon, God increased the breadth of his mind. The breadth of his mind was increased. I declare that may this be your portion. May God increase your, the breadth of your mind so that you have got understanding. If you have got a clear vision, discipline comes back to your life. Focus comes back to your life. Even associations are defined by what God enables you to see. So let's just begin to pray as we dedicate this, this year, as we start this year. That may the Lord realign us, even in those areas that I was talking to about today. May God realign you this morning. May God make a way for you. That even as we start the year, we start firm. As we hit the road, we are going to cover so much ground this year. As we pursue what the enemy stole from us last year, that we will recover all. We will recover all in the name of Jesus. Let's just pray in the spirit as we build ourselves up in our most holy faith. As God, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit, as we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit tells us the mind of God. The Holy Spirit will begin to, to tell you what it is you are supposed to do in this year. Let's just pray in the Spirit. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, our helper, our helper. He knows, he announces things to come. He is the one who tells us what is in your mind, O oh God. So, Father, we embrace the Lordship of the Holy Spirit even as we start this year. Father, we thank you. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us to realign ourselves, realign ourselves as we look in our past that, Father, we will be able to learn lessons where we made mistakes so that we can realign and learn some principles. What are the things we need to do differently this year? Father, give us the grace. Give us the grace. Give us the grace, oh God. Your grace is able to teach us all things in the name of Jesus. When the anointing, the anointing will teach us all things. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that may you teach us this year. May you teach us to number our days. May we number our days. May we number our days. May we be those people who are shrewd in, in 
how we manage our time. Managing time is managing our lives. So, Father, as we start the year, oh God, we thank you, Lord, for an agency for us to be able to win souls. We are going to be good disciples in 2021. We're going to share the gospel. We're going to share the good news. We're going to be so winners. We're going to be so winners. We're going to be so winners in the name of Jesus. Come the spirit of laziness, spirit of procrastination. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Father, we thank you for discipline. May discipline rest upon our lives in the name of Jesus. As we start this year, Father, we thank you that, Lord, we will finish this year strong. In the name of Jesus, oh, Father, may your grace rest upon us, O oh God. May your grace rest upon us, O oh God. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even as we start this year, this is a good time for us to to reassess our relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, we are just coming from, a, from, 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 from the holidays. We're coming from the Christmas break. Uh, and some, some of you may have even backslidden because people have been partying, so many things. People have been doing, people do all sorts of things during this time. But this is a time to, to look at yourself to say, have you been growing spiritually? Where, are you where you are supposed to be spiritually? So today, I want to talk to two groups of people. Maybe you are here today, you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. This is the year that the Lord has made, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Today is your day. Today is your day of your salvation. Today is the day. Today you are ready. Today, I'm talking to you. Today you are ready. You are ready to, to surrender to the King of Kings. What a year. What a way to start your year. What a way to start your year as you surrender your life to Him. There's a second group of people. You have not been a good disciple. You have not been a good disciple. You have not been witnessing. You have not been faithful. And this is a good time to say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. I surrender everything to you. Even as I start this year, Lord, I surrender to you, the King of Kings, the Lord, the Savior of my soul. So I want to pray with you as we start this year. I'm so excited about some of the things that God has shown me, you know, that will happen in our lives. But the best way is to start this year with our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ watertight. So let's just pray. If you are one of them, I just want you to stand up to your feet wherever you are and I want you to put your, your left hand on your heart, lift up your right hand and I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you this morning. Let's just begin to pray. Father God, I thank you for a new year. Thank you for 2021. Father, you have kept me alive to, for such a time as this. So, Father, today I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you, Lord, to cleanse me. Thank you for your blood that washes all my sins away. Thank you for your blood that met all the legal requirements that the enemy has against me. Thank you for your blood that has set me free from all generational bondages. So, Father, today I choose to start 2021 as a disciplined disciple, as your child, oh God. I surrender to you. I thank you. May you seal this confession with the precious blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, my helper, may you fill me now. Fill me, Holy Spirit. You are my teacher. Teach me how to order my days. Teach me how to order this year. Teach me how to be focused Teach me how to be a good disciple. So, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me just pray for you. Father God, we thank you for yet another year. Father, even as we start this journey of 2021, Father, we thank you that, Lord, you are with us. You've already gone before us in 2021. 2021 is our year of overflow is our year where your goodness will overtake us in every area of our lives. But Father, we choose to, to do our part. We choose to collaborate with you. We choose to be disciplined disciples. So Father, we thank you for this month. We thank you that, Lord, you have gone before us. So Father, may your grace continue to rest upon our lives in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So once again, 
thank you so much for joining us. And 2021 has started. So we are excited about some of the things that the Lord has shown us, about some of the things we want to do in 2021. We are so, so excited. So refuse to be left behind. Do your part, do something, and God is with us. Otherwise, have a blessed week and have a blessed month as we continue in His grace. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have been blessed by this message. Remember to share this message with others and meditate on the Word during the week. We look forward to connecting with you again this week in our cell and prayer meetings. Join us again next week for our next Sunday service. Have a blessed week.